By rule, a tessellation is when a shape repeats itself perfectly in every direction with no overlapping or space in between. One board night, I came up with the idea to make a tessellation with shapes that I could doodle on and fill with color. I had no idea it would become something that so many people would appreciate and admire. So far, it has allowed me to share my story with family at home, peers at school, and even strangers camping out at music festivals. This is a drawing I made over the course of two months that I call My Tessellation. I started out making a practice tessellation to develop ideas for my work. By searching the internet, I learned how to make a simple tessellating square pattern. I experimented with various media like chalk pastels, pens, and sharpies, playing with designs and textures. Not satisfied with the lack of complexity in my design, I started to try a different shape to tessellate. I made a perfect hexagon shape and drew two repeated shapes within the hexagon to cut out for my stencil. I began tracing the stencil on my paper from the inside out, making sure the edges line up as much as possible to get a true tessellation. To add a sort of background texture, I applied chalk dust by grinding different colored chalk pastels over the hexagon stencil and patting the dust into the negative areas of my shape with the tissue. This texture later helped my imagination see different things to draw. The dark and light contrast served as faux shading to allow me to imagine outlines, faces, and figures. After that, I began making pen doodles of whatever my imagination led me to. I started in the center with the red and blue squid shape and slowly worked my way to the edges of the page. Some sections involved more detail than others. Some became small narrative illustrations, such as Noah's Ark, The Wrath of the Giant Flying Spaghetti Monster, Walk a Weekend, and The Story of the Girl with Good Luck. I experimented with different ways to fill the shapes, such as the bold straight lines behind the stash tree, the scaly texture of the orange squid arm, and the leaves of the weeping willow. Other sections were simply doodles with no definite direction. Because the shapes fit snugly together, I played with the theme of things morphing together, eating each other, and ultimately interacting with as many other things as they could. I can only describe it as infinite interaction. Towards the end of the process, I decided not to fill the page entirely with color, so I drew the corners in graphite and black felt marker to give my design a sense of protrusion. The most fulfilling reward for me is the way my piece invigorates its viewer's imagination and pleasantly forces them to see creatively and interpret the things they see in their own individual ways. The entire process was completed in about a month and a half, and I continue to profit from my time spent absorbed in my own mind.